just want to take a quick look at the relationship between Ka and Kb for conjugate acid-base pairs. Um, so if we take a look at something like HNO3 is an acid. If it's an acid, according to the bromsted lowry definition, it would be donating an H+, and it would turn into its conjugate base, NO3-. Um, and you could go the opposite way as well. Something like NH3 is a base. According to bronsted lowry if it's a base, it's accepting an H+, it would turn into its conjugate acid, NH4+, and would cause those conjugate acid-base pairs. When something acts as an acid, it turns into its conjugate base, and vice versa. So you can always look up, if you have a textbook, they list Ka's and Kb's, but you can look up these values and how are these related to each other for an acid-base pair. Well, Ka times Kb for an acid-base pair always equals Kw. And what is Kw at 25 degrees Celsius? It's 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which is in your AP Cap formula sheet. Okay, so if you know one of them, you can always calculate the other that's missing. So if you know the acids, Ka, you can find the conjugate base, Kb, and vice versa. Okay, um, you might see pKa and pKb. Remember that P in front for chemistry, you're doing, taking the negative log of that thing. So this is taking a negative log of Ka, negative log of Kb. And these two things are related to each other because pKa plus pKb equals pKw, which would be 14. So pKa plus pKb equals 14. Um, so let's just look at an example. For HF, I give you the Ka. Tell me what's the formula of the conjugate base and find Kb. So if HF is acting as an acid, what does it turn into to become a base? It would turn into F minus. It would release its H plus or lose its ionizable H. And if I need to find Kb, I could just plug into the equation that the product of Ka times Kb is Kw. I know Kw at 25 degrees Celsius is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And I get my Kb. Okay. Similarly, let's try another problem. Um, HBr. Here's my Ka. Write the formula for the conjugate base. It would be Br minus. Find Kb. The product of the two should equal Kw and I get 1 times 10 to the negative 23rd. What are you noticing about the relationship between Ka and Kb? The bigger the Ka, what about your Kb? It would be smaller. They're going to end up having this inverse relationship. Um, this is actually the reason why strong acids are so strong. So if I looked at the example, the first example I did with HF, my Ka was a relatively weak acid, and my Kb, I get a Kb that's kind of equivalent to a relatively weak base. For HBr, which is a strong acid, I have a really large Ka, something much, much bigger than one. And notice that my Kb value becomes so small in order for that product to still um, come out to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So this is actually the reason why strong acids are so strong. Their conjugate base, something like HBr's conjugate base, Br minus, is really of negligible strength. It really cannot accept or hold on to H plus ions, and therefore it remains completely ionized in solution. HBr turns into H plus and Br minus, but the Br minus never really ends up going back and accepting an H plus to turn into HBr. Um, so if I kind of look at these two diagrams down here, um, though this is HCl rather than HBr, same thing kind of applies. Um, HCl is such a strong acid, has such a high Ka, that Cl- doesn't really function as a base. It never can really hold on to that H plus in solution. Whereas HF, which is a weak acid, okay, um, it can go in the opposite direction. Uh, H plus and F minus, the F minus can pick up that H plus and turn back into HF, and that's why a lot of it remains unionized. Okay, and again, just like the acids, that I could get, I could ask it in reverse. I can give you the base. The formula for the conjugate acid of NH3 would be NH4+, plus, it would pick up an H+, plus. and Ka I would get from the product equaling Kw, this would be 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So again, the larger the Ka, the smaller the Kb, and therefore the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. The larger the Kb, a smaller Ka, therefore the stronger a base, the weaker its conjugate acid. It is an inverse relationship. 
So strong acids completely transfer their protons and dissociate entirely. They have bases of, their conjugate bases are negligible strength. So HCl is strong acid. Its conjugate base Cl minus is of negligible strength. Okay, if you have a weak acid, okay, it will have a conjugate ba base that is also weak. So weak acids and have conjugates that are weak bases. Weak bases have conjugates that are weak acids. And if you have um, a strong base, you're going to have a conjugate acid that's of negligible strength. Okay. In any acid-base reaction, the equilibrium will actually favor the direction that moves the proton from the stronger acid to the stronger base. So um, if they ask you which direction is favored, either compare the two bases or the two acids, and the reaction will favor the direction that puts the stronger as the reactant. So for instance, if here's a reaction, and I want to know, does equilibrium lie to the left? Does it favor the reactants, or does it favor the products? Okay, HCl, um, here's my Ka. It's much bigger than that of the other acid, H3O+. So it's going to favor um, going to the right. It's going to favor HCl transferring the proton to the H2O and turning into products. Okay, and then another example, here's acetic acid. Okay, on here's H3O plus, and I give you the Ka's. Notice that now H3O plus is a much stronger acid, so it's going to favor the reverse direction. H3O is stronger than, H than uh, acetic acid because the Ka is larger. So equilibrium lies to the left. It favors the reactants, and that's why in this reaction, um, acetic acid is actually um, a sample of it contains mostly the molecules rather than the ions. And what would you say about K for this overall reaction? If it lies to the left, K should be less than 1. Little equilibrium review.